What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pat Tate's Performance. Today in the driveway, we have this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Snowtech Arians 24. This is one of the earlier generations because of the dual exhaust. I'm not gonna go crazy on this video because I have one explaining why I love this machine. This is not the best version of this machine, but I think this is a later version. I think Arians took away the full tilt shoot control because they were probably losing sales to their compact series. I don't blame them. It's just economics. Two 8CCs and 24 inch. Anyway, this video is not about the machine. Actually, it is. But today we're gonna focus on the engine. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about the machine. I almost lost out on, on buying this machine, okay? Um, this machine was supposed to be running and driving and blowing snow the way it should be, um, advertised as in like new condition, if memory serves me. Correct, see, see if I have the uh, ad saved. I have to travel a little bit out of the way, but one, it's an Arians. Two, it's the Snowtech line, the 24, and I am very familiar with this machine. I actually have a build series on the generation that I absolutely love, the style that I love, and I actually have some action videos on it. An absolutely phenomenal machine. If you're looking at a 24 inch in a different brand, you're not getting a 28cc engine, and you're not getting a few other commercial or quality traits um, that other machines are lacking. Nonetheless, uh, I knew there was going to be a problem when the place I went to go meet to purchase this snowblower was the same exact place I met to buy our very first snowblower that launched Pat Tay's performance. So the bad thing about that snowblower is the, priest, the people who sold it to me lied. And I knew I was in for some trouble because when we were pulling away, the two individuals that sort of high-fived each other and Mrs. Pat Tay's performance caught it. Nonetheless, which is fine, that's the negative. The positive is that machine, them lying to me, turned into this. I had no intentions of anything other. So out of that negative experience, I've definitely made some really, really good lemonade. <laughs> so, um, so we get to that place, I already have a negative feeling, and the guys bring it out. So it's a group of individuals, they bring it out, and guess what happens? Right? You guys probably already know um, what, what potentially could happen when you advertise a machine that's running and it's, it's not running. Okay, so they went to go start the snowblower. They primed for a good time. Gas came more spilling out, which is fine, but you don't tell them that. The machine ran and died right away. It's like, oh. Oh man, what could it be? I just say nothing, remember. This is supposed to be a running machine. They're supposed to start it, not me. So I drove about 45 minutes to get to this machine. It looked in fantastic shape. Um, I missed a little bit of an oversight. Tires are bald. But the reason why the tires are bald is because, the out, because they ran this with no air. I put air in the tires. And the outside has great tread, inside doesn't. So that means this tire was pancaking against their driveway and gravel floor. Not much use because you guys could see there's white chalk lines throughout the entire machine. So now here he goes, the dance of them trying to start this machine. They're checking this wire. That's why they pulled it out. Um, why is that wire pulled out? Well, this wire is pulled out. I don't know what that goes to. Um, and they just couldn't get it running. And I'm telling the guy, like, after a while, like, can you start this? Nope, my, because they're saying, my shoulder hurts. <laughs> I want you to show me how to work machine. I don't know. So then um, it was uh, two younger guys, and I would assume their father. So I asked him if anybody has tampered with the machine, and they said, no. I says, okay, that's fine. So then later on, when they're trying to not try and get this machine started. They finally sit there and say, oh, this guy, Adam, cleaned the carburetor. I says, I thought I told you, well, you asked if somebody took apart the machine. Well, obviously they took apart the carburetor. 
and now it's not running. So I drove 45 minutes away. Mrs. Pate's performance was calling me. And no, she didn't have high heels on. So now we start to get a little heated and um, I offer them less than half their asking price. And the guy says, meet me in the middle. And the middle was a $50 interval. That is a lot of money for a non-running machine. So I said, no. I said, listen, fuel's leaking out of the carburetor. Doesn't start. You know, obviously this thing needs some sort of repair. So I'm gonna have to get it repaired and serviced, which is true, right? Don't trust anybody, service the machine as soon as you get it. So the father says, no, I'll bring it home and I'll have Adam fix it. So I says, okay, so how about this? You know, we agreed to um, our price point. Let's have him fix it and deliver it to me. Oh no, we can't do that. What do you mean you can't do that? I just drove 45 minutes to get here for a running machine. You guys screwed up. So then the father got really, really quiet because I think he could see the tone in my voice and it dropped um, and that nice word in between. Basically saying that it's pucked, 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 so YouTube doesn't hit me, pucked up, that you guys made me drive out 45 minutes for a snowblower that doesn't start, doesn't run, and you guys don't want to work with me. Well, you're not working with us. What do you mean not working with us? I agree to your full asking price that the machine was running. No haggling. This is going to be a five minute transaction. It turned into a hell of a lot longer than that. So I basically told the guy, listen, you know, if I could spend more, I would, but it's a used machine. Literally, we're loading it up into the back of my pick, the back of the Honda, and we're gonna unload it at the repair shop. I didn't tell him who the repair shop was. So we finally agreed to the machine. Um, by the time I got home, it was a little late. I don't wanna piss off the neighbors, but the next day, I just gave the machine um, a once over and it's fine, okay? I think what happens is, is the guy made the mistake that we all do, and I've made this for, I only started this doing last year. Let me show you what happens now with the machine. I put some sea foam in it, and I'll show you what the machine does. Oh, and I didn't clickbait you, and I'll tell you why I didn't clickbait you. The electric start does work. All right, the smoke is seafoam, and we're also, we have the choke apply. This is cold. Oh, let me get you towards the engine, and you can see what I'm doing. So there's, this is choke, and this is run. So it'll only run with the choke applied. Remember, somebody clean this carburetor. Right? Now let's see if it clears up under load. So at high height of the let me show you why I didn't clickbait you guys. This is an Arians Snowtech LCT. Okay, let's look over to the next snowblower I have. What does that say? Poolin Pro, same exact engine. Same as even Husqvarna. I'll get this out for a, another video. Make sure you guys subscribe and you will see. Okay, so don't forget, there's only a handful of manufacturers that make their own engine for their snowblower. Honda, Yamaha, and that's it. Oh, and everybody else has an engine, but they built the machine. So you're gonna see LCT on Poolin Pro, Husqvarna, Arians, 
orange or Snowtech their economy line. If there is an LCT engine that I'm missing for a brand, please, please throw it in there. I think Toro uses Lyson, Longcon, however you want to say it, and everybody else like this, Troy Built is power more. So what I'm thinking here, I really haven't taken apart one of these. We're going to adjust the carburetor. One, two, three, four, five, six. These bolts should come out, and this is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful thing. We're gonna have full access to the carburetor compared to some other engines where you really have to take the cowling apart, like on a Palomar engine. I can't stand that. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's take care of this, this surging problem, okay? I am not going to clean out the carburetor. I think they did a really good job I just want to see if my speculation, taking you guys on a little whirlwind tour, is, is right, right? I want to, there's nothing wrong with verifying if something is right or wrong. If I was to fix this problem head on, then we would really never know what the root cause of it. So I am not going to sit there and say that clean the carburetor is not a viable option. But let's see what we got. These are 10 millimeter. And hopefully if I'm right, you get to see the pretty side of the carburetor. I love this blue exhaust muffler. I really, really do. Look at that. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Look at that. So we're gonna zoom right in to our culprit of what I think the culprit is. And that's where it is right here, okay? We're gonna be focusing on that black and little red screw. That is called your pilot jet. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna be focusing on this right here. So just a nice Phillips screwdriver. We're gonna back this out. Now, with these here, you basically wanna have this cover half of that screw. Just you take a visual note. Take your flat tip screwdriver and let's pop this out. Okay, I live on an island. And I think the reason why we have a lot of these issues is elevation and our height above sea level. So now we got that out. And here is our idle circuit, right here. Can you guys see that? It's a very, very tiny hole. Let me get you guys on focus. Focus, man. Okay, see that? The hole that passes through is not the problem. It's this little hole right here that is. So it's, it's very, very simple. Um, just a drill bit kit. Okay, this is made by Blue Point, but you can get any jet drilling kit you like. You could actually drill this entire thing out. I have. I just don't like to do that no more. I have since upped my tool game. So I just like to open it up just a little bit. So these are a very, very small hole. <sighs> okay, remember there are machines that say carb compliant California and non California admissions. Now they all come California admissions. Well, guess what, pal? California does not set the standard for every freaking state in America. It's one of the worst states in the, in the country, in my opinion. Goddamn admission laws. Idiots. So let's drill this out. Let's open this up a little bit. Like I said, we're just speculating. We didn't know if the guy did a good job do not know but you're gonna see it break through I don't know if the camera is gonna pick this up okay 
and you're just gonna feel the breakthrough. See how, see how this is such a small and fine drill bit? I didn't put this on a drill. Look at this, I just used my force and the finger itself. And that is it. See that? Nice and easy. So we're gonna put this back in the machine. So, I know we're gonna do this without the zoom. The way it goes in is the same way we took it out. And we're just pressing it down. No crazy amount of force. We just press it down back into the machine, okay? Now, we're just gonna put our jet back in and then we'll fix another mistake these idiots did and we'll go from there not not the manufacturer I'm talking about the company all right see how this is held on that so let me get some distance and we will fire in the hole and see if we fixed our surgeon If not, then we just have to dive a little deeper. Whoa! Does it sound better already? It's not even on, it's not even on run yet. Look at that, half choke. It sounds better already. Love, love. All right, guys, nice and easy. Tell me, tell me, tell me what you think of that. While I'm talking to you guys, I'm just gonna see if I could find out where the heck this plug goes, or maybe not, because we'll just leave it. Everything starts and runs on its own. So, tell me what you think of that, guys. Very, very simple. Just a little small drill bit, jet drilling kit. I got this from my Snap-on dealer. I think it was like 30 bucks. It was, it was very reasonable. I asked him if it was guaranteed for life, he said no. But I did it anyway, support your local dealer, not your drug dealer, drugs are bad. Support your local Snap-on dealer within reason. Um, there are jet drilling kits that you could purchase on eBay. Um, I will throw an affiliate link for you guys. If you don't wanna get a jet drilling kit, then just get a generic drilling kit and make sure they're really really small um, because there are going to come situations where I see there's a, a good and I think it's pretty good a good trend lately where other people aren't using things as Christmas ornaments or, or wires or, or welding tips to clean carburetors they're actually using micro jets so that that'd be something cool to do but then again I'm just like you guys in the driveway Unfortunately, this is a little bit of a specialty tool um, thing to do. But like I said, if you have a generic set of drill bits, you could definitely do this repair. Just don't take your half inch drill bit and, and open this up. Please, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Um, I'm going to get this covered on without talking to you guys. And uh, we're going to move on to this machine. We're done. It's, this thing has served its purpose. We'll get this thing uh, tidied up. Hope you guys are excited. I am. I am. I like. I like when things come to uh, fruition. Something like this will turn my day, turn my frown upside down. So, all right, guys. If you guys found this video helpful, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Formants. And don't forget the Mrs. and I. We go live every Saturday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern time. Remember, this video applies to Husqvarna, both versions of Arians, and Poulin. Do not bang me for clickbait. Don't. It's the engine we're talking about, not the snowblower. Later.